2019 will be transformed in the UK into a field hospital. Tested positive so too for coronavirus will Birmingham's National Exhibition Centre. My work is mainly uh, photographic and video based, uh, often looking at particular um, moments of significance in our uh, contemporary history. So a lot of the time I'm responding to political, economic and cultural changes that are taking place. Um, a lot of the work I make is photography based, so I make large format landscape photographs which explore how we use the landscape almost as a theatre set to enact various ideas of um, belonging and identity and ideas around nationhood. Over the last few years I've, I've been exploring more and more using other media, uh, sound, video, uh, installation. And this series, um, Unavoidable Loss, A Failure of State, is a kind of reworking of a photographic series that I made during COVID. So during the lockdown, like everybody else, as a kind of creative, I was trying to figure out how does one respond to something so significant as this moment when I was literally stuck at home. And I went for a walk on the first day of the lockdown when we were allowed our, our little kind of moment of, of freedom. And I walked to the sea and I just kind of stood there and looked out at it. And there was that kind of sense of peace that, that, that comes with seeing these vast vistas, you know, this kind of uninterrupted view. And so I just took a picture and I posted it to my Instagram account with a quote, a sea related quote. And I got quite a lot of kind of feedback, you know, people saying, oh, you know, I'm locked in at home. This is you know, really nice to see. And so I thought, oh, tomorrow I'll do another one. So I did that. And then I did another one. And then throughout the entire first lockdown, I was photographing every day, posting these pictures, keeping the same horizon line throughout every picture so that you, we see the sea changing um, in terms of the dawn to dusk. You know, one day it might be tumultuous, the next day it might be quite calm. And the series became this, uh, became a daily sea was, was, was the title. And um, I started selling the prints on Instagram to raise money for the NHS. And it kind of took on its own life. And at the end of the first lockdown, I thought, actually, I'm going to continue doing it. And I ended up photographing it almost every day for a year, covering th all three lockdowns. And I created this um, kind of portfolio, which represents this extremely important moment in our shared history, you know, one that is, is, I guess most people won't have experienced anything like it before, you know, this living through a worldwide pandemic. Anyway, fast forward another kind of year or so, and all these stories started, started coming out about the, um, the parties during lockdown. And, you know, we'd hear interviews from bereaved families talking about their loved ones. And, you know, as we came to that second anniversary, I was really taken by the fact that there was these, you know, this was such a, a kind of moment of, of tragedy, really. And maybe some of that could have been uh, prevented. And so I decided to go back and start listening to a number of the recordings that, we, that were happening during lockdown. I don't know if you remember, but there was the daily press conferences where um, uh, various ministers, including Boris Johnson, would, would be there with, with uh, Sir Patrick Valance and, and uh, Patrick Whitty, um, you know, talking about the, the death rate and then, you know, how, what, what, we, what we could do. And it became this kind of soundtrack um, to our daily lives. And what I started trying to do was feed out some of these, these, these sounds along with um, this incredible recording by the actor Rory Kinnear, where he actually read out the names um, of uh, a number of people who died during the COVID pandemic. Um, and I started trying to work out how I could uh, bring these, this, this audio to life. And what I decided to do was, was basically rework this series of Daily C taking 365 photographs that covered those, uh, the, the year of lockdowns and um, using this kind of audio as this um, a backdrop, if you like, um, where it kind of yeah, slightly brought to life this, this experience. 563 fatalities since yesterday. 48 people who tested positive for COVID-19 in the UK. So what we see in the film is a, is a progression from the beginning to the end of the, of the three lockdowns. 
and it starts with this uh, transition of photographs. Actually, no, it actually starts with this cacophony of noise as we hear um, Boris Johnson announcing uh, the first lockdown, the first uh, all these kind of various the news reports, the first news of the death, the and it's this kind of overwhelming um, uh, rush of noise. And then suddenly we, we get to see this picture of the sea, which is somewhat calming. And then as we go through each day, what happens during the first lockdown is that I flash up a number which represents the official death rate on that particular day. As this became this significant moment where every day we'd, we'd, we'd hear another you know, um, figure that was, was representing those that had died. What was interesting is that in the first lockdown, actually in the first few weeks, the government were under-reporting the, um, the death rates. And so actually what we're hearing is different from what we see on the screen um, until I think it was about April the 1st where the government realised that they had been under-reporting and then they changed the figures. So at some point during the film, the figures start matching the audio. And then alongside that, we hear um, this uh, incredible monologue by Rory Kinnear, um, whose sister actually died of COVID. And as it turned out uh, later on, she, the day of her funeral was the day of one of Boris Johnson's uh, um, infamous parties during lockdown. So there's a kind of political edge to this. Um, and then every so often there's, in the soundtrack, there's a bell that tolls. And it's a kind of muffled bell that almost sounds like it's uh, under the water. And it marks several significant moments. So one of them is the, the highest death rate um, of COVID during the first lockdown. One of them marks the 50,000th death, and then another one marks the 100,000th death. And then these voices of the politicians who in some ways are, are quite glib and maybe quite offering faux um, sympathy. You know, we hear Matt Hancock or uh, Priti Patel, um, in these press conferences telling us about you know, what we should be doing next. So I guess the, the, the thread that links all our experiences is that shared sense of loss that many people experienced, whether that was a loss of loved ones or whether it was a loss of um, various interactions with our friends and our family or, or um, events that we, in, that we were no longer able to take part in. And the film tries to, throughout it, ask this question about, you know, how do we memorialize this, this event? How do we remember what happened? And at a time of a public inquiry, which is trying to ask hard questions about what actually happened and how could it, things have been done better so maybe fewer people would have lost their lives, we really do need to explore, you know, what can be done to prevent, you know, this, this kind of um, death rate in the future.